Hi everybody, Sean James here from Myself Reliance. Over the last year, I built this cabin that I'm sitting in front of right here for my wife and I and our dog. So you might be wondering why I'm building this outdoor kitchen and why it's so big. So the main reason is I don't have air conditioning in the cabin, obviously. So the trees are basically my air conditioning. The issue is that it, this is a small cabin and if I was to fire up that wood stove like I did all winter and spring, it would be unbearably hot inside. So this is the temperature inside right now and this is the temperature outside. So as you can imagine, I don't want to cook inside the cabin. So this outdoor cooking pavilion, this forest kitchen, is uh, my answer to that. It's 10 by 10 square roughly. I have an irregular roof line and over the next few weeks I'll be building a, a grill, so a st stone barbecue, um, a rocket stove to act sort of like a, a side burner for cooking vegetables and boiling water, boiling kettles for uh, tea and coffee and so on. And then along the back side I'll be making a pizza oven or a bread oven out of uh, clay, so an earthen oven. So I'm really looking forward to getting these things done so that I can get outside and do all of my cooking. Right now I am uh, boiling water and uh, cooking my meals on the open campfire as you've probably seen on, on the grill and on the tripod where I'll suspend a, a crock pot or something. So that's great but it's a little bit too rustic. First of all it uses up a lot of firewood and it's uncomfortable bending over and not having a pr proper table to sit at so this outdoor kitchen is the answer to that. So I mentioned wood so one of the things I will be doing is making a bunch of charcoal here. Probably wait until the kitchen is just about done and I'll make a whole load of charcoal that I can store inside the, the outdoor kitchen somewhere or in a separate coal bin. But the reason for that is this is an all wood structure. It's going to have likely, I haven't decided because I really build organically uh, depending on what materials I have. So I plan on making a bunch of cedar shakes and roofing it. So what I'm going to end up with is a complete wood structure that when dry it can be very susceptible to, to fire. Um, so that's why the roof line is so high but also why I'll mainly use charcoal for, for cooking because I don't want sparks going up and, and catching that structure on fire. Now I do have fire extinguishers, I do have the stream behind me here that I can continue to bring water up and I'll always have water there in the kitchen in, or in case of a fire but also for cooking and cleaning. If you've been following my channel, and I hope you have been, if not, then make sure you check out the playlist on building this cabin. Uh, you'll find out that I build very organically depending on what materials I have on hand. I'm trying to do as much as I can from the land. Um, I have to bring some wood in, I have to bring some other outside building materials in. And what I end up with is sort of organic structures that are not very um, you know, compliant to uh, code or they just don't follow what a lot of people would consider uh, proper building practices. So the structure of this outdoor kitchen, you wouldn't call it timber frame, you wouldn't call it log home building. I'm not sure what it is. I'm just uh, using some, some techniques that I'm figuring out as I go and uh, it's going to evolve over the next several weeks as I finish the pavilion, the structure itself, and then I move down into the bottom where I'm going to make that grill out of stone. And I might do some cordwood base for the uh, countertops. And of course, uh, why I'm building it is to get outside more, spend more time cooking outdoors, which I really love to do, to get out of the cabin. The cabin is a fantastic winter structure and it's a great place to sleep. And and uh, relax and get out of the rain and so on but it's too warm for the most part to be inside during the summer and I just love it outdoors I just want to spend as much time outside as possible sitting on the porch sitting under the outdoor kitchen exploring the surrounding um, forests and waterways getting out fishing and hunting and and foraging and and just enjoying nature and Callie loves it here too my wife loves it so another thing I should have mentioned is that the logs all the logs that you see here I've cut down either on a friend's property or my sister's property um, in addition to the stuff that I, that I cut down here. I don't have that many pine, cedar or fir on the property so I wasn't able to take everything I needed for the cabin, the uh, outdoor kitchen and the workshop and then the, any accessory building. So I really have to thank my sister and my two friends, they know who they are, for uh, letting me harvest trees on their property and put them to good use. So their forests actually needed thinning. In fact, they still need thinning. Their trees are growing way too closely. They were planted years ago, a lot of them. And then the natural groves of cedar are so dense that you can't even walk through them. And there's no undergrowth uh, at all. So it was beneficial to, to start thinning them out. So since I cut them down last spring and the previous winter, they've aged probably not quite enough fully to uh, use for this kind of construction, but better than if anything I cut down here or cut down in the future. So that's why you see me using whatever I have on hand, 
whatever I can lift for the higher beams for the work that I'm doing instead of just saying, well, I just need a different type of wood. I'll go pick that up. I can't do that. So that's why uh, the construction methods and the, uh, and the choice of materials are so odd. So I filmed that first part a couple of weeks ago before I released episode two and I just didn't get a chance to edit it and upload it until now. So one of the questions I'm getting of course and I expected and, and rightfully so is why is it so wonky and sort of organic shaped rather than linear. The cabin I always envisioned it being more of a like a trapper's cabin, more natural, more moss covered and and uh, just more organic. So the uh, because that cabin kind of just came together based on the materials that I had and the site and everything else, I just uh, and time it was taking me longer than I thought it would for for one man using mostly hand tools. I thought um, I could knock it off quicker. But anyway, it uh, I still I'm still happy with it. But I, I do uh, wish that it was a little bit more organic. So I thought in the next cabin I'll do that. I'll get a little bit more creative with the lines this forest kitchen since it's evolved uh, beyond what I originally planned which was just a sort of a barbecue in the open and then the pizza oven because I'm making it out of clay it won't harden so it has to be covered uh, protected from the rain so I thought well I'll put a little roof over top of that and that led to this big roof so I like this idea better anyway so it's a full cooking pavilion that's protected from the weather and also I can store wood and stuff like that under here, um, but there's also somewhere I can eat because I'm getting tired of just sitting on benches and rocks and stuff and eating off my lap. So uh, I'm excited about this. So the organic nature of the structure is for that reason. And now as I'm sitting here building and putting this thing together with all just random logs and stuff that I have lying around, um, I'm kind of liking that it's starting to look like a tree. So now I'm just running with that idea. I've got all kinds of cross braces instead of just doing the typical regular cross braces in the corners I'm making it like branches and I'm having them all over the place in fact once I finish doing the interior work like the stonework and everything I think I'll get back up there and add sort of like spider web um, sticks and stuff like that kind of making it really really organic and then the roof being cedar shakes I'll probably sp uh, spread some moss spores on there and since the cabin is or the structure is mostly in shade because of these big maple trees I think the moss will start to grow especially here on the north side now the wood uh, you're wondering I'm sure you just keep seeing me disappear down the driveway or down the path and coming back with wood the 12 inch boards I had to go back to that same mill that I bought the roof boards and the floorboards at um, really really cheap and I'm looking at my dwindling pile of logs and I know that if I cut all of that into planks I'm going to run out of wood before I get my workshop in the next cabin done. So I thought I hate to do it again, I hate to buy in wood, especially now that, that I have a I'm using a chainsaw first of all and I have an Alaskan chainsaw mill. I hate to also buy wood, but I have to buy logs anyway, or I have to go through the forest and start selectively cutting wood, but it won't be ready to, to use for at least a year or two. So if I have to do it anyway, I'd rather go to this uh, country mill that I that I get my wood at. It's so cheap, it's all rough lumber, it's unseasoned, but it's uh, you know better than what I would cut. And they have lots of it. It's uh, coming from managed forests as well. So basically, all the material used for this cabin is coming from very well managed forests. None of it's been you know from clear cuts. It's either uh, plantations from years and years ago or uh, thick, thick cedar woods that um, you saw me cutting stuff down in. So if you want to watch this, or you want to watch some of the other projects that I'm working on, then please subscribe. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss anything, click on that notification bell um, so that when I upload a video, you'll be notified. Every single Friday, I will be uploading these videos and I have been doing that for the last six months and I'll continue to do that. But I do post random videos like this one in the middle of the week. And uh, often it's about something 
uh, related but a uh, little bit more of an update or more information about me or my philosophy or whatever else is going on my, in my life at the time. So like I said, please subscribe. Let me know what you think and uh, what you'd like to see here. If there's any parts of my life that are missing that you'd like to know more about, just uh, ask me below and try to get back to you. Anyway, I've got to go. i got to get back to work here. Really appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time. Take care.